Good morning. It's, this is amazing. My heart is literally pounding. I had absolutely no idea what this would be like. Um, but it, it's great. I am appreciative of being here today with uh, Dr. Key. I'm here because of Dr. Key, so any, we're going to blame it on him. Uh, but we want to just say to you this morning that personally we have no, um, what's the word? Conflict no conflicts to disclose. To disclose. So uh, we just want to just talk with you for a few minutes here. So I, I was really excited to, I may need you right now. Is it okay? Let's try it. All right, we're going to get it together here. Um, when we talked to Joden, about this and, and we really had some conversation because we really, I personally wasn't quite clear what Dr. Key was getting me involved in. Um, and, and I say that jokingly because we do this to each other. We get each other involved in things and then we say, what did we do? Uh, but the, we, we really wanted to focus in on sustainable community engagement and a constantly changing health system and what that means. Um, because sometimes when we talk about community, it is, and I think it was mentioned before, it's very broadly defined. But what's so wonderful about this opportunity today is that that broad definition is going to really work for us. And we appreciate those who came before us to kind of set this conversation up. So we're going to share community perspective. And we say perspective intentionally because we cannot speak all of the intentions, the understandings of the various cultures and the various uh, persons that encompass the many uh, kinds of communities that are engaged in the health system. And so we just want you to, to keep that in mind. We're speaking of it from a perspective. Uh, in a constantly changing system, there are, three, there are four goals we want to talk to you about today. We want to give you a little bit of a historical context of, of how we uh, talk about community engagement, especially as it relates to the ethical and legal and social implications in a changing world. Share perspective of the community as a continuum of community engagement. Provide some concepts of how we will engage communities in the health system. And ultimately, we have some recommendations. I'm excited because today, I have with, in this room with me are two people that uh, actually got me involved in the first conversation I ever had around ethical, legal, and social implications of anything. And it was around genomics. I was fortunate to be invited by Toby Centrin to, New, to Washington, D.C. when Francis Collins was at the helm of the ship and they talked about the, the, the completion of the human genome. And Vince Bonham was also there. He was working at Michigan State and we worked on a couple of projects that looked at how do we inform and educate a community around this big issue of genetics. And one thing was really, really important. So how do people in communities understand this? And so we had a series of dialogues and in some of those conversations, it was really is what is morally right about this or wrong about it? What's legally right or wrong about it? And how does that impact me as an individual, my family, and those who I live, work, worship, and play with? We had a number of projects. One of them included a, a, a genetics education between among African Americans and Latino Hispanics. And what does that mean? Because there are different cultural contexts within which these things play out. And how do we give consideration to those conversations? And then, then it expanded. We were part of a national com community committee for the prevention research centers. And we talked about this at a national level across communities, 30 different communities across the nation that were part of the prevention research centers. And that led to the community members themselves saying, what do we do and how do we help inform communities? So there, was a, there were several regions that did educational programs. And so that was one hosted in the Midwest region by community, for community, with national involvement. And so we've, we've been at this for a little while, but we also still have the question of understanding what community means and how do people understand community and how do we engage community. So Dr. Key is going to talk to you a little bit about how community is divide, defined, some research defined, and then we'll go from there. Thank you, Yvonne. So the first thing that we have to look at is when we look at community engagement, let's define community. So in a learning health system, what does that look like? Oftentimes in community engaged research, community can be defined very narrowly or very broadly. So in a learning health system, it may include researchers embedded in the system, clinicians, insurance providers, but then we also advocate for patients, family, and caregivers to be a part of that. 
We should identify what types of research that we're going to apply the community engagement continuum to, empirical, implied, et cetera. And then we want to define clear research objectives related to assess the effectiveness of how we engage the set community in the, in the health system. So the other thing is your ability to engage community may directly affect the quality of the information that may be produced within your learning health system. So let's keep that in mind as we look at this spectrum. So examining a community engaged continuum from a research perspective looks like this. On the far left, you'll find more traditional approaches to a research model where community has little say in research questions, designs, or approaches. And the community's role in this scenario is predominantly as the subject or the participant. In an academ academically driven scenario, you may have a little bit more involvement with community. Maybe you have a cab or an advisory board, but it's not necessarily placed in the community, and most of the time the community may you know, respond to surveys or, or research models like that, but it's not really inclusive fully of the community. Then when we move forward towards a more community place engagement, we see community advisory boards more involved, a little bit more discussion around um, the research project, and then they're actually placed somewhere in the local vicinity of the community. So it's not necessarily a, sur a phone survey or an online survey, but actually people are communing within the context of the physical geographic location of a community. Then we have a community partner research where community is derived from a partnership between the community and the researcher. And at this point, the community has input in research, possibly may have a little suggestions around the design, but in most cases not involved in the other critical phases of the research, such as the data analysis and the dissemination of, of the findings and the translation of the findings, which is also key. Finally, near the right of, 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 of the spectrum where we kind of talk about community-based participatory research, it's a point where engagement with community is involved in all phases of the research process. That includes setting the agenda for the research project, under identifying the research question, the approach, and the design, but also in the co-ownership of the data translation and of the findings. Now, I'm not inferring that this endpoint on this continuum will be fully applicable to a learning health system, yet the possibility is there. Consider the benefit of a learning health system where full community engagement at all levels and at all points of engagement. What would that learning health system look like? Every place where a patient, a family member, or a caregiver interacts is a point of engagement within the learning health system. Thus, it is important to engage community at all levels. So there are some benefits specifically for community engagement as we try to apply them to a learning health system. There's research questions and learning objectives that are more relevant and meaningful enhanced system design and delivery that are culturally appropriate, building the capaci capacity of both individuals um, within the academic sphere and in the, com the community partners, increasing likelihood that research results are translated and disseminated to participants, but most of all to members of the community, and then foster shared commitment that can lead to implementation. So what are some connections for us now? One of the things that's critical, we found very, very critical in engaging community is to be sure that we define things. We all have heard words that we really think we understand and we have a definition for, and we go to a meeting like this and we learn something totally different. <laughs> so I wanted to just take a moment to talk about this in the context of my experience as a community member going out to work to engage uh, healthcare providers. So I was working at a nonprofit community uh, organization looking at, as a foundation, looking at chronic kidney disease. And I went to talk to one of our healthcare providers and I asked them about partnering with us. And so they said, well, do you know anything about meaningful use? I knew I was set up. <laughs> <laughs> so I honestly said, no, I have no idea. So it was, it's important to define the term. So I just put this definition here because I'm sure you probably already know it, but I needed to understand what did meaningful use mean. Now I really simplified it and said it simply means taking all of this electronic information that the government had paid some institutions for and making sure that it had value to the patients or those who were being provided the service. So I, I, I had to make it real simple for myself. So then, 
this whole notion of the electronic health record. What does that mean? It's a digital version of patient's chart on a, on a piece of paper. Now, you may know what that means, but when I come into your office and you're giving it to me, I may have absolutely no idea what that means. So then the medical, uh, the electronic medical record. So what does that mean? Tracks what you're happening to you over time. So how does that translate into what it means for me? Continuous quality improvement, research, evaluation. All of these things are important, and you know about them. I have no idea what you may be talking about. So I did this. So let's team up and have a team approach to um, addressing this. And if I can do this very, very quickly, this gets re really confusing sometimes to people. If I had my preference, I would have three more triangles with each one, and that would probably be very confusing. Why would I do that? Because there are roles for the patient in this process. There are roles for the provider in this process, and there's also roles for the information. So if we could just take this right quickly, and you see these arrows are going back and forth. So the patient at this point is a community. And if we say this is gonna be a learning system and the community is gonna have involvement, what's the conversation? Uh-oh. No, go back. Uh-oh. <laughs> keep talking. Let me keep talking. You work that. Okay. okay, so what's the connection between the patient or that community and that provider? as it relates to the electronic medical record. Yeah, am I really being informed about what that is and how it can, what does it mean to me? And if you're listening to what it means to me and then you're translating it into how it can improve that record, then there is some, we, some triangulation between the, the meaningful use of that electronic medical record, the electronic health record, and what happens in the life of that patient. And that's a, that's a continuous process. Then we jump over to the other side, continuous quality improvement, doing that all the time. But this suggests, in, in, in from the research perspective, typically we do research and we wait to the end, we evaluate it, hurrah, we've got something, let's go do it. This suggests that as the research is going on, if in fact there is something that will improve what's happening in my life or the life of the community, let's evaluate it at that point and make some course corrections and include that in the process so that the continuous pro quality improvement not only happens at the end when we've done all the things that we think we can do, but it happens in the process. So in order to make this happen, can you do that for me, my brother, because I'm, 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 I'm excited here and I only have, what, I don't, I don't have room. Trust cannot happen. None of this, and you've heard it from the beginning, trust. And you see the arrows going both ways. That's intentional. Trust is in the middle. Patient, provider, uh, researcher, anesthesiologist, uh, whatever it is. I must trust that you hear me. And then I must trust that you can translate that to others that you will work with on my behalf. Because this record then can be used, it, sh it should be used by specialists if I have to see one. Somebody else who is in the process of engaging in my care that you may have the opportunity to communicate with that I may never see initially. Because if there's research going on in, in the lab and all of that wonderful clinical stuff that people are doing and I don't have access to that conversation, I must depend on you then to share that information and then bring it back. Equally important then we on the community side, it's important for us to have enough knowledge and confidence in sharing the information, as you mentioned before, all over the world, then we can go and share that and build up our ability, our capacity to have cross communications in which sometimes we use the term cross fertilization. It isn't enough for, and, and I know I hear this a lot, so this is a my thing, this is, this is coming directly from me, it isn't enough for it to be bi-directional such that you're hearing me and you say, okay, I heard you and I got it. It has to be cross fertilization. You have to bend like the trees, not just let it grow any kind of way, but it has to begin to become a part of who you are and what you do on a regular basis because as it was said, the system itself, the hospital bed and going down on the cart, that's not making a difference. It's the interaction between the patient, the orderly, the folks that fix the food and bring it to the table for people to eat, whatever that is, that trust is so important. So we want to leave you with this, to, you, to recommendations. Utilize the concepts of community engagement as a continuum. Communities are complex, and there are communities within communities, 
There's cultural contexts with, even within ethnic communities that create changes in the environment of how things are communicated. So we want to identify ways to include the patient or the community at every possible level. That means as you're doing your work, you have to determine, and my time is up, how you can do that. It's a thoughtful process. Inform and advise the patient of their options and opportunities to be included, provide education. You can read the rest of these. The bottom line is we have to communicate effectively. We have to trust that communication and be aware that there are differences even within the context of that communication and how do we make it work. Thank you.